So now the sun is right here, and the sun, that is our star. We are located around the sun. The sun is a mean sequence star, and the sun is located in the Milky Way galaxy, like these other stars as well. Again, a galaxy is a collection of billions of stars. So the sun is within the Milky Way galaxy, and the sun makes up our solar system. The sun is referred to as the solar, so it makes up a solar system. And this formed about 4.6 billion years ago. Again, the Big Bang was 14, around 14 billion. And then around 4.6 billion years ago, the solar system formed, the sun formed. And then because of gravity, the other planets will now orbit around the sun. So on page eight of the reference table, it actually tells you the ge geologic history. And over here, you can see 4.6 billion is the estimated time of origin of Earth and the solar system. Now, these, these are called planets. Planets are these celestial bodies that orbit around the star. So we are, <clears throat> we are on a planet called Earth. And in our solar system, we have eight of these planets. Now, these planets, they uh, is called the heliocentric model. Helio refers to the sun, and that is called the sun at the center, so heliocentric. That is uh, as opposed to the geocentric model, which was that they used to think that the Earth was at the center, but really the sun is at the center, so it's called heliocentric. And the planets, they orbit around the sun. They don't orbit in a circle. They orbit in an elliptical orbit, which means that it's uh, slightly oval, called an elliptical orbit. And we have eight planets in our solar system. You have the first four, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. These are referred to as terrestrial planets. These are called terrestrial. They are small in mass. They are smaller, and they are higher density, which means that you could stand on them. So these are called terrestrial. The, the other four, the outer four, are called Jovian. These are much bigger planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. They are much bigger, and they are low density. They are gaseous. You can't actually stand on Jupiter. You would fall through. It is this heavy gas. Now, in between the terrestrial and the Jovian, you have this belt called the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt is a belt of a lot of rocks which orbit around the sun. And that is called the asteroid belt in between Mars and Jupiter. These asteroid belts sometimes collide into planets. For instance, our moon, it collides into it, and it creates these holes called craters. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> Also, the formation of the planets, what you should know, is that the gravity caused more dense materials to be pulled towards the center, causing the planets to become layered, that the more denser materials move more to the center, and causing the planets to be layered, which we'll discuss later on in part two. In the reference table, you have the different data about our solar system. Again, you have the four first planets are called Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, which are terrestrial, and the other four are called Jovian. So you have the different data about these planets. So first you have the mean distance from the sun. That means how far away they are from our sun, which is our the star closest to us. So that's the mean distance from the sun. You can see how Mercury is the closest, and you have Neptune is the furthest away from the sun. You then have the period of revolution, which means how long it takes a planet to make one full circle around the sun. That is called the period of revolution. D is in days and Y is in years. So it takes Mercury 88 days to make one full orbit, one full revolution around the sun. It takes Earth 365 days. That is how many days there are in a year. So that's how long it takes Earth to make one full orbit, one full revolution around the sun. If you do 365 divided by 360 degrees, which are in a circle, that would be one degree per day. So the Earth's rate of revolution is going to be, it is moving at one degree per day. Now the period of rotation, rotation is how long it takes the planet to make one full spin on its axis. That is called the rotation. So revolution is moving around the sun in an orbit. Rotation is how long it takes the planet to move to spin on its axis. If you see the Earth here, the Earth takes 20, about 24 hours to make one full orbit, which one full rotation, one full rotation around its axis. If you did 360 degrees, that's how many degrees there are in a circle, divided by 24, you would get 15 degrees. Therefore, the Earth is rotating at a rate of 15 degrees per hour. So it's one degree per day for revolution and 15 degrees per hour for the rate of rotation. Now, the eccentricity of the orbit, again, the planets do not have a circular orbit around the sun. They have an eccentric orbit around the sun. Eccentricity is how ovular the orbit is. Zero would be a circle, and one would mean that it's a straight line. So if you see the planets here, they are close to zero. They're not at zero, which would be a complete circle. They are they are like 0 0.017, 0 0.093. Mercury has the greatest eccentricity, which means that it's the most ovular in its orbit around the sun. So the equation for that is on page one of the reference table, and you have to know it for the practicals. 
the eccentricity is equal to the distance between the foci over the length of the major axis. I'm not going to get into it so much now, but it's for the practicals. But this would be zero, and then this would be, let's say, 0.02. Now, the foci, foci are at two points that are equidistant to the center of the orbit. So here is the center of the orbit. So the foci is two points that are equidistant to the center. The sun is at one of the foci. So here's the sun at one of the foci, and here's another imaginary point that is equidistant uh, with the sun to a point that is in the center of the orbit. So you take the distance between the foci and you divide it over the length of the major axis, which is from the lo longest points in the orbit. And that would give you the eccentricity of that planet. This would be a longer planet, a longer eccentricity. So the more eccentric the planet's orbit is, the more distance there will be between the planet's foci. Now, also, a planet that is closer, the closer the planet is to the sun, the more gravity that there's going to be, the more gravitational attraction that there's going to be, like we said before, the closer the planets are, the closer two objects are, the more gravitational pull there'll be. Therefore, the planet will go the fastest at that point. So the planet will move the fastest in its orbit when it's closest to the sun. It'll move slowest when it's away from the sun, the furthest away. So the closer the sun equals the, gr the greater the gravity and the faster the orbit, therefore. We have the equatorial diameter, which is how big it is at its diameter. And if you see here, the terrestrial planets, they are much smaller in mass than the Jovian planets. The Jovian planets are much larger in mass. You see how they have a much, much bigger equatorial diameter, which means how big it is at, at its uh, largest point. And you have the mass. These are smaller in mass, the terrestrial planets, compared to the Jovian planets, which are much more massive. You see how they have a much bigger number when compared to the terrestrial planets. However, the terrestrial planets, they are much higher in density. They are high density. They are therefore rocky, higher density. Therefore, you could stand on these planets. You could stand on Earth. You could stand on Mars. But the Jovian planets, you see, they have a much lower density of 1.3, 1.8, which causes them to be this heavy gas. So they're called gas uh, giants, gas planets, the Jovian planets. That is the solar system data on page 15 of the reference table. Hi, this is Donnie Rudansky from Regions Made Simpler. And if you like that lesson, be sure to check out regionsmadesimpler.com, which is in the link in the description below. And you can purchase my full course for just $89 for the upcoming region exam. This is the only resource you need to do well on your upcoming New York State region exam. And in the course, you will get a two-part Regions review of all the material you need to know in a simplified version, like you saw in that lesson. Plus, I have video review with visuals of past region exams. That is not just me explaining the material. That is also me, as you see in this picture, me with visuals explaining the correct answers and the incorrect answers as well. For just $89, that is less than one typical tutoring session. So you can go to regionsmadesimpler.com. That is in the link in the description below and check it out. And if you scroll down, you could see the... Um, a preview of those region review courses and the video review of past region exams. Again, this is only for $89. That is less than one typical tutoring session. And you could get everything you need to know and learn everything in just two to three hours for your upcoming exam and do extremely well.